give some commentary on a bit of the um, bigger picture that's going on here and talk a little bit about the effects that globalization has had on this island and these people. Now, post-war Japan has not been an easy thing for the people of Japan. Post-war Japan has been a very exploitative situation for the Japanese people. At the end of the war, the Japanese people had finally been released from the clutches of fascist imperialism. And they found themselves without a sense of direction of where to go next. So the American government gave them that direction. The, Jap the American government basically wrote their constitution. They've slightly modified it over the years to make it even more enlightened than it originally was. But that's not the biggest issue here that we're seeing when we talk about the effects of globalization on, on the people of Japan. We look at the situation right now and a lot of um, foreigners in this country have a very, very negative opinion of Japan. You'll hear a lot of comments of people talking about Japan's racist, Japan's xenophobic, Japanese people hate all foreigners, these type of things. <laughs> What's going on? Why there's a lot of Japanese people who are xenophobic? Why there's a lot of Japanese people who develop feelings of racism towards people who are not Japanese? This nation has been through a lot of exploitation since you know, the war, since the World War II. So they developed a uniquely islander way of dealing with it as a people, not the government, because the Japanese government in post-war had been just as bad as the government they had under imperialism. Come to this country and exploit the hell out of it, man. Try to make all the money they possibly can. Just take advantage of any cultural thing they can. And don't get involved in society. And don't take a time to deeply understand the underlining reasons for a lot of things they see here. And that's due to globalization. Directly a problem of globalization. Well, the powers that be in this country are so greedy and money hungry that they'll allow this to happen. They'll allow foreigners to come here and have a ne very negative opinion of the country. And they allow foreigners to come here and not truly be educated on what's going on. So you have people like um, Daibito, who is a naturalized Japanese citizen, going on his big crusade against racism in, in, in Japan.
they exploit the hell out of their system, exploit the hell out of the culture, all for the purpose of making money, okay? Especially in the English education industry. It's very, very, very exploitative. Uh, the general nature of it. You have these companies who set up, they bring foreigners in, don't properly educate them on this 180 culture shift, uh, have them teach a the Japanese a bit of English, um, and then exploit the hell out of the foreigners. The foreigners get frustrated, angry about that. So in turn, they take it out on the culture. over and over and over again you know and then look at the the big nuclear issue that I'm often covering you know my main topic that is also an effect of globalization these companies are told they don't have to care about the people they don't have to care about the culture they only have to care about making money that's what globalization is about globalization is all about the idea that culture and the people actually living in an area do not matter it's all about creating the largest market possible and making the highest profit profit margin possible into the streets in Tokyo and other areas in Japan the people who actually live here don't want nuclear power <laughs> from all the globalist propaganda that's going on with Japan you know where the whole world will just say ah the Japanese who cares what they think or feel it's not relevant that's globalization okay that's globalization in your mind telling you to think like that. To write the people off and it comes down to just money. Profit. The Japanese market is just another market to be exploited and taken advantage of. So you see that in corporations here in Japan with TEPCO and Kansai Electric. They're not behaving in the interest of the people. They're as a means to make money, they're behaving in the interest of globalization to make money. And you see foreigners come to this country. They don't come here, they say they do, but most of them do not really come here to actually be a part of Japan and learn about Japan. They come here to make a bunch of money, um, exploit the culture of going to temples and different things, taking pictures, sending them back to their friends, saying, look how cool I am because I'm in Japan without even taking a moment to really get involved in the culture and the problems that, that are important to Japanese people and the issues that are important to them and trying to express that to the world globalization okay that's the f effect globalization's had on this it doesn't matter what country you come from it doesn't matter how much money you think you came here to try to make there's something very important going on here that's affecting the entire world all right, this nuclear crisis in Japan, it's not a Japanese market issue. It's not a localized issue. It's a world problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you have the time, why don't you look up that nuclear plume cloud? that's on a 40-day cycle around the earth due to the recent typhoons and things that cycle has probably been disturbed and probably a bit faster at this point but there hasn't been new data on that for me to report
connected to this island in a similar manner that the people actually born here are. See, I am getting deeply involved. I am offering an independent perspective. At the same time, I do have emotions towards this. And it is important to me to get the message out here and to tell and to try to other people to stand up for the people of Japan. They need you. But due to the, how long they've been exploited, they, the common people simply do not trust the outside world. That's where that xenophobia is coming from. That's where that racism is coming from. They don't trust the outside world for so long, at least three, possibly four generations. They've been exploited and they've been told, you can't stand up for yourself anymore. You have to have total faith in the government. You have to let foreigners come here and do whatever the hell they want. You have to let businesses treat you in any manner you want. You are the defeated people. You're the bad guys. Remember what you did in World War II? Yeah, that's the attitude they, they've been forced to believe. So that's why they will not ask for help so quickly. They're slow to ask for it due to a trust issue they have with the outside world. So if you really want to get involved and help Japan, show them. You will stand up for them. And you will fight for them. And they're smart people. They'll see it if you show it to them. And they will allow you in. They will allow you to stand by them if you show them. But if you come here... The use of atomic energy will inevitably have devastating and costly consequences. We have to let government and business leaders know that we, the citizens, are determined to resist nuclear power plants.